Edgar, thanks for taking some time for us here today. Uh, what are some of the things that stand out for you from the Federal Indian Boarding School report? Uh, I think this report is monumental. One, it is continuing the process to document and memorialize the history, the, the facts of what really has happened on American soil uh, to indigenous peoples and our children historically. Um, this second report also codifies the data giving more specific information about where boarding schools were and how many children and families were impacted. And the final point that's really, really um, exciting is there's a call for action. There are policy recommendations in this report. Um, we are basically uh, you know, telling the government what we want and need to move forward to begin a healing process. And so now we can organize around those demands to begin to see um, the truth and reconciliation come to pass. Yeah, among the recommendations are an apology from the federal government, a national memorial to honor boarding school victims, and returning boarding school lands to uh, local tribes where they were located. Uh, what do you make of those recommendations? I think they're a good start. I mean, honestly, I think uh, when I read them, uh, when the report came out, I was really pleased with the recommendations. Um, but I also um, felt like I was wanting more. <laughs> um, I want to see reparations paid as well. So I think it's really important to return land. The apology is absolutely important. It's a spiritual act of acknowledging and taking ownership but without action behind that apology. Of course, it's, it's not as powerful. Um, so in addition to the policies in the report, I'm curious uh, to, to understand what type of repayment can be made uh, for the loss of life and the, uh, you know, the near genocide of our, our community and culture in this country. I guess, uh, Edgar, for yourself, did you pay much attention uh, north of the Medicine Line to the, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission here and the apology? Absolutely. I have paid attention to that. Of course, it's been a source of inspiration in a lot of ways, and we've also seen uh, some of the complications and the challenges in, in implementing that and um, are hoping uh, that we learn some lessons from the process so that maybe we can have a, a smoother uh, process here in the States. Yeah, you know, the, the TRC released the 94 calls to action nearly 10 years later. Most have not been addressed. Uh, you have an election also about to happen. Uh, how hopeful are you that these boarding school recommendations uh, will be addressed? I feel really hopeful in this moment. I think um, there has been a lot of progress in, in politics with Native leaders in various offices across the country, including, of course, Secretary Holland serving in the cabinet. Um, I uh, know that at least one candidate, Kamala Harris, is deeply committed and has been for a long time to issues in Indian country and uh, will support many of these, if not all of these recommendations through her uh, leadership if elected. Um, honestly, if the election goes a different way and Donald Trump is elected, I am very fearful for um, indigenous sovereignty and he has already demonstrated you know, uh, racism and a lack of respect for our community through many things that he has said. So um, I'm hopeful um, we're all organizing towards uh, democracy and, and freedom. And so I think this report comes out at a perfect time where a new leadership can come in um, in that office and to take this, this work forward. And it's been um, amazing the way that Deb Holland has uh, championed this work and that the federal government has made these steps over the last years under the Biden administration. I guess no matter the outcome, how do uh, tribes, organizations like yourself keep the pressure on to ensure that some of these uh, recommendations are implemented? Thank you for asking that. I think that's the most important point to be made here. We have this report. Um, there are demands that are written in paper, but they will not come to pass if people do not organize. We as Native people, our allies, our friends, our relatives, joining with us to put that external pressure. This is why we launched a fund called the National Truth and Healing Fund at our organization, Decolonize the Wealth Project, to take philanthropic resources to support uh, community organizations and Native leaders outside of government to organize and to apply um, pressure to do movement building work to ensure that we actually have a TRC um, in place and that all of the things that we want and need in that process come to pass. So the power of the people is really critical here. I'm thankful for the steps that have been made by the government, but these steps have all been made possible by leaders who have been um, very bold in their advocacy efforts. Well, Edgar, we'll be watching from here. Uh, appreciate you taking some time to talk about it. 
Yeah, thanks for having me.